Right, now we're going to have a look at some of the tools and resources you can use to help you write your code for your CS extension. I'm in the Java perspective with an Eclipse with the Flash Builder plugins installed. What I'm going to do is switch in to the CS extension builder perspective. I go to Window, Open Perspective, Other, CS extension builder. The first time you show that perspective, the start page would appear. You can also access the start page under the help menu, CS extension builder start page. Now, the start page has links to documentation and other resources, such as the project wizard. Click on the start page, click on new project wizard, and then enter hello, let's say, um, where I to omit some of the parameters here, such as the menu name, then the dialog would warn me that the menu name cannot be empty and disable the finish button. Put back the menu name, where I to try and provide an invalid identifier for the bundle ID, it again would, would warn. So there's validation taking place on that dialog. At this point, the finish button is disabled because I haven't chosen a target application in which my extension would load. At the moment, I'm only really going to care about Illustrator, but I could choose arbitrarily many of these. Um, let's move on to the next screen. I could choose Finish at this point, and it would generate the code for me. But I want to parameterize it a tiny bit further. I could choose a different window type, um, and I might choose to set the height to be different, say. Um, suppose that I set the width, and I really want to type in 207 but I type in an invalid character by mistake, and it warns me it has to be a numeric value for the width of the panel. So I'm almost done. I could click Finish again at this point, optional, or I could click on Next, and enter a package name. And let's just choose something simple, and we're done. I click on Finish, generate some code for me. Now let's go and inspect that code. At this point, I think, oh, right, maybe, maybe I really wanted to target Illustrator and Photoshop and InDesign. How do I change the commitments that I made after the code's been generated? Now, let's have a look and see what code's in there already. You can see there's, hello there, Illustrator. Um, in there. And if I go to select the project, go to the Context Center menu, I can CS extension bundle manifest editor. Then I can change the range of target applications. I can also change, for example, the width and height of the panel associated with the extension. I'm not going to do that for just now. I'm going to go with the choices that I have. What I'm going to do is have a look at the code that's been generated and then start writing some code to implement something that I'm interested in at the moment. So the main MXML. The entry point for the application is really quite simple. And there's one other source file that has a functional code in it that talks to the Illustrator DOM. And what I want to do, my objective here, is to write some code that's going to create a document for me with some text in it. And I want to set that text to be quite large and in some distinctive color, say red. So how can I go about doing that? What I'm going to show you is how the code hinting and how the in-context documentation available to you directly from the editor is going to help us in that task. So I've got a, a variable at first, the application object, and I know that I want to somehow add a document to the collection of open documents. And indeed, there's a documents property that is available to me from the application object. So I'm going to have a look at that. And indeed, it tells me there's an add method which let me create a document. That's really quite useful. And that's going to return something of type document. So what I'm going to do then is create a variable. Um, it's got my doc code type document, which maintains a reference, that document object that we created. And now what I want to do is I want to add a text frame to that document. So I've got a reference, a document, and I have a punch. It might be something to do with T, text frames. Indeed, there is a collection of text frames in the document. Um, the in-context documentation is providing me. Um, I just want to, again, oh, add. There it is, create a text frame item. Now that's going to return me 
a reference to a text ring, that's right. That's great, so now hopefully we've created a document, we've created a reference to a text ring that we created in that document, and let's set the properties in that text ring. So I can set the top and the set top to be, I don't know, 100 points. Um, set the left coordinate the text frame and maybe want to set some text and there we are, text contents of this text frame and let's set the text, great. So hopefully we've created a document, created a text frame, added some text to it and we've done that in two or three lines in a few seconds by just using the code hinting that's available by using the documentation and the hints available to us from the editor. Now what I want to do is apply some attributes to that text that we hopefully have just created. And I have a hunch that there is a list of character styles on the document. And indeed, in fact, I can see it directly there, character styles, list of character styles. Uh, I want to create a new one. How would I do that? Add, again, it's good. All I have to do is supply the name, and let's call it, I don't know, Big Red, let's see. Now that's going to return character style reference, and there is indeed a character style class. Um, the only thing I have to do is I need to grab the attributes from it, and there it is. There is indeed a property which is available to me directly from the character style, and I'll create a variable that refers to that, and that's of course the type of character attributes. Um, and now I can start to set the properties such as oh, size of the text. set that to be quite big. Uh, what I also want to do is, like I say, set the colour to be red. Now, let's create a red colour. I think that's going to be an RGB colour. That's great. Um, oh, one thing before I go further, I just remembered that um, the default for documents would be CMYK, so I really want to set RGB colour space. It's new RGB color. Right, great. And this is going to be easy because the red color value between 0 and 255. So if I want to be fully red, then let's make it 255. And the other green and blue to be 0. Great. I'm almost done. I'm hoping that's got a fill, and it has fill color. It goes red color. So hopefully I'm going to create some big text and colour it red. Um, probably all I have to do now is actually apply that character style to my text. Um, apply to, and it takes, I happen to know it takes a text range. And with a bit of luck, that's done. So let's, let's go ahead and run that and see if it does what we expect. Um, which is create an extension called Hello There. Let's kind of load an illustrator, create a document for us with some text in it, which has been styled red. And you can see that we're running on a controlled debugger, so trace appears. Um, set a breakpoint, sorry. Um, switch to illustrator, and load extensions. Hello there. Click on run the I code. I should hit my breakpoint. I can step through, create a document in the background. Um, and then I'll just continue to execute, switch back into Illustrator and I'll move the document that we've created. So you can see that what we've done is we've been able to create some text inside of Illustrator within a few few minutes just by using the code hinting and the lingering hint available to you within the ActionScript editor. So from my point of view, that's a fantastic contribution to developer productivity and to improving the overall developer experience of creating CS extensions. Thank you very much.